Welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. Hello and welcome to the Ordinary Marathoner Podcast. My name is Coach Scott. I'll be your host today. It is Monday, January 18th. Uh, hoping to get this podcast out to you guys today. I know I promised one on Monday, so hopefully we can get this all together and get it out there today. Um, first things first. Uh, we are cur- we are currently under a a COVID. I would say let's say call it a COVID scare, a co- a COVID quarantine. Um, our daughter, our two year old Ellie, uh, was exposed to a number of people who have contacted COVID. She spent a lot of time with them, so there's a good chance in the next few days that my two year old will be COVID positive. Um, you know, as as a father of a two year old, it's not something where I'm going to be like, yeah, you get her away. You know, I, I uh, for me, it's it's, I, and I get it. It can it can be, uh, I'm 46. It can be, it can hurt. You know, I'm in fairly good shape. I'm a little overweight, but I'm in fairly good shape. Um, so I like my chances. Uh, you know, I'm hoping for the best, but um, I'm not going to shy away from giving my daughter love and attention just for my own personal fear. Uh, So there's that. We are quarantining in our house. We talked to our doctor. Doctor kind of said, hey, look, you you got it. Like if she has it, you have it. Like you're not going to, just by staying away from your your two-year-old, you know, you're not, you're still going to get it. You're in the same house for for days. You're going to be in the same house. She's going to be contagious. So you might as well just be a dad, right? So that's what, that's what we're doing. It's me and my, my two-year-old, my 11-year-old. Thank God we found out I, as she was on her way to the house. She was staying with her mother. She was on her way to our house for the week and we found out and she was pulling in the driveway and I had to call and say, hey, sorry, um, you know, you're, you're going to stay with your mother for another few days until we, we find out if this cleared. Um, so it's me and my two-year-old, my, my wife, Stephanie, and my mother-in-law are here um, for the next few days until Doc says we can leave. Until Doc says all is clear. And we'll see about that. We'll see how that works. Um, so yeah, I'm stuck, stuck in the house with with my mother-in-law for upwards of a week, maybe 10 days. Send the rescue chopper. <laughs> I, I actually I don't mean that. She's actually really wonderful. She does amazing things. She helps us out so much. But uh still, if you if you got that chopper. <laughs> Lower the basket. I'll jump from the roof. Anyway, uh, that's not true. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, that's anyway. That's where we are right now. You know, I, I'm just I'm kind of taking this day by day. I, I feel fine. I feel great. I had a little cough this morning. It made me a little nervous. Like you know, you, when you're in that mode where you're kind of looking for anything that might make you sick or may, might signify that you might be ill. You know, every little cough or every little sneeze or any kind of like, oh, did was that a pain in my throat? <laughs> What was that? You know, um, every little thing, you know, it, uh, it makes you think you, you're, that you're sick, but, uh, right now I feel good. I feel fine. I'm going to keep training until this thing knocks me out. You know, if it knocks me out, it knocks me out. If I'm out for a few days, for a week, whatever it may be, two weeks, I hear some people, uh, but it is what it is. I'm going to face it straight on and, and we'll see how it goes. Um, and, and who knows, knock on wood, maybe we won't get anything. Maybe she didn't, maybe she never had it. Uh, I also know that people who are, you know, young, young children are often asymptomatic. And if she doesn't show any symptoms, she may not be as contagious and maybe we'll get lucky. So we'll see. Uh, but right now we're, we're stuck in the house. We're not going anywhere, uh, for the next few days. It's, uh, it's fun times, fun times. Um, let's move on. Let's move on. So, In the last show, I talked to you guys about some potential changes to the show format, and I asked for uh, some feedback. And, you know, we have this word in this term, right, in our language. It's called constructive criticism. Some of you probably heard that word, you heard that term, and you probably just shuddered, right? No, I don't want constructive criticism. Leave me alone. Um, But there's two two ways to handle constructive criticism, right? Um, There's the right way. Which is, hey, you asked for it, you received it, even if you didn't ask for it, you received it. Uh, it's from a source that you respect. And you analyze it and you say, hey, does this does this comment, does it make sense? Does it really apply? And if it does, is there something I can change or something I can do about it? Or is it just, you know, not something I can I can change, not something I can live with, not something I can adjust to. 
Um, and then you make your decision, you go on, right? You try to appease them, especially if they're a fan, like for, for a case here, a fan of the show, uh, contacts me and says, Hey, I, I, this is what I think. And I, I could say, you know, Hey, that's a great idea. Or I can explain, Hey, it's a great idea, but I can't really do it or, or what. And they can either re- choose to remain a fan of the show or they can go elsewhere. They vote with their feet. Um, or the second way you can approach constructive criticism is by either becoming offended or defensive, meaning someone sends you a little criticism and you say, oh, go scratch, you know, go (laughs) get out of here. I don't know what you're talking about. You liar, you know, you don't accept the criticism. You send it right back at them. Or uh, they say, hey, you know, this is what I think. And you, oh, no, I'm not doing that. Oh, no, no, no. That's not what we're doing here. Uh, You're not, no, you're not telling, you know, that's, you're not kind of, you just deny that anything's going on. Um, I'm, I'm not like that. I try to be like the former as best as I can. And you guys con and, and I was shocked cause I, I did get, I want to say, I probably got about a dozen people that contacted me back, which is a lot for the show to get feedback from, uh, that contacted me back. Some of them I expected, most of them I didn't, um, by far and away, the feedback was positive. The feedback was great. In fact, uh, the number one thing that we heard was love the show. I love the show. I'm good with the format change. If that's what you have to do, um, that's great. If there was a but, I love what you do, but the but was this, and probably three or four people said this, was I really liked the show when you were doing it daily. And back in 2019, the first half of the year, I was doing the podcast five days a week. Uh, We were doing about 10 to 20 minutes per day. And just talking about kind of whatever's on my mind, that's what it had to be. It's like I roll out of bed and whatever I, I was thinking, that's what I do the show on. Plus, it was sur- you know surrounding the fact that I was training for Ironman Lake Placid at the time. So that made sense. That was good. Um, and the feedback there is is excellent. And I kind of agree. I mean, we've kind of, we've gone away from that form. And I'm right now, I mean, I went from five days a week plus guests to one day a week, no guests. That's a little bit of a drastic change. And if you really like the show and it was daily, I get it. It's totally different now. It's totally different when it's not daily. Um, and I've considered it. I have, uh, seriously. And we're going to make changes. Um, so here, case in point, I think what we're leaning towards right now is to do the show three days a week, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I will tell you this. When I do these shows like that, it's like a 15 to 20 minute show or 15 to 25 minutes. Number one, I don't put a lot of planning into it. It's all off the top of my head. You're going to have to forgive me if I say something stupid. (laughs) You guys have to be a little more forgiving for me uh, if I say something dumb. But um, I like the idea. I do like the idea of going back to that and kind of just kicking out shows. And 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 so let's try it. And the reason we're going to do Monday, Wednesday, Friday is Tuesday and Thursday. We're going to be live streaming for two hours um, after, you know, for our morning, early morning bike rides. So I think that kind of covers us for like every day. We're going to have something out there. And I know, look, I'm, I know if you're a podcast fan, it's one thing to ask you to listen to a podcast uh, and another thing to ask you to just watch us ride for two hours. Um but right now, that, I think that's a nice that's a nice sort of complimentary thing that we're doing with with the plans that we 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 made for this year, and I like it. I like the idea. I like the thought. Um, so thank you guys for that. I, I totally appreciate that. Now, to some of the negative stuff, to some of the more negative stuff that I heard back, and and I got to tell you guys, guys, it takes courage to provide negative feedback, right? It takes courage to for someone to call me and say, hey this is how I would change things or this, you did a little bit wrong here, or you might've tripped up here or, you know, and, and I get it. Cause like I said, you can, you can vote with your feet and just leave. And instead of doing that, you take the time and you make the effort to reach out to me and say, Hey, this is what's bothering me. And I like that. And, and, uh, we had a couple people give two, two criticisms in particular. Uh, so it wasn't one person. So if you're out there and you're saying, Oh, that was me. Number one, I appreciate it. I, I honestly, if it was hard to say to me or if it was hard to kind of like reach out and say, hey, uh, this is my idea or my thought, um, I appreciate that because uh, I, I, the alternative is you leave. And I don't like that. And I feel like a lot of us and especially, especially the people that kind of provided um, the criticism, uh, I, f- I, I feel like we're friends. So for you to kind of reach out and do that, I, I appreciate it. And, uh, you know, watching me get a wave of calls of, oh, you suck. This is why. <laughs> See, I told you, I just, you said I should tell you if you suck. <laughs> anyway, uh, the two most, um, there were two, 
I guess, most uh, contra- not controversial, but uh, two more negative feedbacks that we got. One was concerning Team Ordinary. Um, you know, Team Ordinary started out about a year, a year ago, a year and a half ago. Great concept. I still like it. I still want to pursue it. I still want to go at it. And, and we have some ideas and we're going to get to that. Um, I think what happened to Team Ordinary, that's sort of like the Number one, I kind of migrated to my coaching business, which is fine and good. And it's coaching business plus whoever is involved. And number two, you know, we were doing, we were trying to get you involved as much as we could. And and I think the main way that we did that was that every week on the podcast, I would announce your races. If you guys had a race that week, I would say your name, say where you're racing, wish you good luck. And then on the next podcast, I would tell you, hey, I hope you did well. Congratulations, you finished. I'd make sure you finished, make sure you ran it, make sure you did well, make sure you were happy. And we congratulate you the next day. And I love that interaction between us. The problem was that come last year, all our races were canceled. And so we had this really great running schedule of all your races that just kind of blew up. And what happened was, you know, yeah, it's great that you guys reach out to me and tell me that your races were happening, but you know, when they, when they get canceled, no one thinks to just be like, Hey, by the way, my race got canceled because all pretty much all of them were canceled. So some of them fell through the cracks. Some of them, you guys actually did go for, you did participate in races. I just didn't know, or maybe I missed it on, on Facebook or whatever. It's like, it's, it was like a really hard thing so, to, to monitor and keep track. So we just let it go. And so the criticism was, Hey, you know, last week I announced a couple of race winners and I did a race a little while ago and you didn't announce my race and perfectly valid, perfectly valid criticism. I want to make this, I want to make this an inclusionary podcast where you guys matter or you're part of the show and not just someone I talk to. Um, and so I think, you know, we're going to try to do that in a couple different ways. Number one, we're going to make a concerted effort, concerted effort to try to revitalize that race schedule. So if you're part of the team, uh, we want you to go in and and re-enter or enter for the, probably for the first time, any races that you're doing this year. Uh, there is a a race schedule up there. You can find either a race calendar or race schedule. And there's a link there that you can just input your races. We'd love to see them. We'll get those things going and we'll start doing that again. I, I, you know, I know a lot of races in the first quarter, very likely to be canceled. Some people are still racing though. I've seen a few already. Congratulated a few of a few of you last week. Um, but yeah, let's get those races on the schedule. Let's get them on the calendar and we'll go back to that. I just, you know, it needed kind of like a little bit of a kickstart here. And I think now uh, that you guys started talking to me about it, uh, we identified the problem. Now we're going to fix it. Not only are we going to fix it, we're going to do something more. Um, now, when this show started, Steffi and I, when an ordinary marathoner concept started years ago, um, Steffi and I, one of the things that we wanted to do was to go to races, big races, and go to their expo where all the athletes have to pass through the expo and put up a little booth with a video camera setting and ask people one question, which was just, and it really is not even a question, it's a statement, but tell us your running story. What is your running story? Get you on video, uh, make a nice little clip, maybe throw some music on there, maybe a little, some graphics or something. Um, get you to give us a one to three minute synopsis of why, how you found running why you get into running, why you continue to run. And I think it's a great idea. I think it's a great idea. It's a great way to tell your story and have something on record on our YouTube channel. I'd be housed right on that YouTube channel. You could send it to your friends. You could send it to your show, your family. Um, You can go through the whole team and see the whole team, you know, anyone who contributes. Uh, Anyway, so I'm just kind of, I just crossed the line there with the, with our plans. Um, I, I thought it was a great idea at the time. I think it's a great idea because I think, you know, people, people like to tell their story. They want it on record. They can have it on record for future reference for their kids, for their grandkids, whatever it may be. They, some, somewhere a point of reference where someone can see what their family member once did and why they were proud of it and what they accomplished. Uh, all those great things. I think it's a great idea. Um, and we want, we're going to go ahead and start it and we want to do it within the team. Um, so the thing is this, we need some volunteers. We need some team volunteers who are courageous enough to get a, we'll get you on Zoom. Uh, if you live close to me, we can get you on on live camera, and uh, and we'll we'll just record some of your messages and and you know some of your story. You can tell it to us. We'll cut it into a one to three minute video. Uh, we'll set it to some music and do it, make it real nice for you, and uh, and then you'll have your you know your video little cameo. So instead of having our athlete profile pages, which I got to be honest, I don't think a lot of you actually go visit, but they're there. 
There's a, a photo of if any if you're on Team Ordinary, there's a, a roster of our athletes. Uh, if you submitted a picture, that's up there. And if you told us your story, it's up there. Some of them, you you know, you told us our story, your story like a year and a half ago. It's getting stale because you guys are doing so much. You're constantly doing new things and achieving new things that, you know, it gets, the bios get stale, the profiles get stale. So you either have to update them or they're just going to sit there and be old. So I think by getting, by capturing a, uh, a current profile, a current video, by the way, you can't come to my house and, and record this week because we might have COVID. But <laughs> but by, by recording the video, I think it's a great idea. And so we're going to start that in weeks to come. So keep an eye out for that. We're looking for some volunteers. Uh, all it would consist of would, would be us going on tape with you and you recording over Zoom, just answering that question. We'll probably come up with some other questions so that we can um, get make sure that we have good you know a, a good a good amount of recording to build that video. And then, uh, and then we'll see from there. I think it's a great idea. Um, and again, all of this came from the fact that one of you decided to, to give me that feedback, right? So you guys gave me the feedback and which wasn't even really connected, right? It was, uh, Hey, you didn't announce my name during when I did a race and you've been out to other people's races. Um, and that snowballed into, into a bunch of different other thoughts. Our blog section is another point. Cause then I started thinking, geez, where else have we fallen down? And I think the other two places we've fallen down is one, the blog section and two, our happy hours. We haven't done a happy hour or a blog section in happy hour, probably like two or three months. And the blog section, probably like a month. So we're going to be working on that. Number one, if you're out there, and you want to submit a blog, let me know. Happy to, happy to, to put your blogs out there. If you, you know, if you, if you have your own blog and you want to submit an article from time to time, let me know. I'm happy to do that for you guys. That's, that's what it's there for. Um, happy hour. We're going to do one. Uh, not this Friday. I think the Friday after we're going to be doing a happy hour with Allison, not, and now I'm going to announce it because I want her to have the pressure to actually start, <laughs> start thinking about it. We're going to do a cooking one. So we're going to do Allison, not our team dietitian. She's going to kind of, she's going to put out a, a list of ingredients for us. So you can go out and get those ingredients. And then we're going to sit down. We're going to, we're going to have, uh, I don't know, have a bottle of wine at your house or whatever. Hopefully we don't have COVID. Um, sit down and just, we're all going to kind of hang out and, and she's going to show us some things about cooking and, and how to prepare like a really healthy meal. And I, I really like that idea, uh, from Allison. It's going to be fun. So, you know, again, this criticism you guys gave me, it's not easy to do. It's not easy to provide criticism. It's not easy to provide that feedback, but it's, it's, you know, it's put some wheels in motion that I like. So thank you. Um, and then the last criticism, uh, which I haven't mentioned, I think the whole podcast. So, uh, that's good. I'm trying. <laughs> the last criticism was too much Zwift, man, too much Zwift. You're starting to sound like an advertisement. You're starting to sound like you work for the company, like you're an arm of Zwift, uh, and you're just pushing it on us. And the answer to that is, yeah, guilty. Uh, guilty is charged. I, I admit, I admit, uh, I don't get paid by Zwift. I, I will tell you when they sponsor me. All right. I will definitely tell you, I promise to do that. Uh, but the fact is that I use it all the time right now. Not only do I use it all the time, but you know, as, as someone developing this team concept of team ordinary and, the, and getting together and, and trying to do things as a, uh, socially, right. That was part of my, my resolution two years ago, or, you know, to, to my 2020 resolution. Uh, I've learned that working out and training socially with others that I admire and others that I, uh, I look up to and, and I'm friends with, uh, it motivates me. It keeps me motivated. It keeps me going. And I just, all I wanted to do was share that experience with you guys. If I could, I didn't want to just keep it to like me and, uh, and Ron and Matt and, and, uh, and Mike Romans and Aaron Shepard and all our little group that, that we meet on these rides. I wanted to expand that. And make sure you guys knew it was there. Make sure you guys knew it, it when you can participate and where you can go to participate. And we put up a schedule yesterday on the Team Ordinary Facebook page. So if you go to the Team Ordinary Facebook page, it is a separate group from the Ordinary Marathoners discussion group. I did not put it on the discussion group for that reason. I didn't want to kind of throw it into discussion. I just want to say, hey, here's the schedule. If you're interested in joining us at any point, be it a run or a ride, or if you are on Zwift and you can't make those, but you'd want to do a meetup on your own, 
by all means, let me know. We can we can kind of come up with that and and get you guys some people to invite. We'll put it out there so people can uh, can hopefully sign up. And look, also, I mean, sometimes we do these meetups and like nobody shows up. So, you know, it is what it is. If people can show up, they can. We want to put it out there so it's available uh, for people. And if they do it, then so be it. And if they don't, that's fine too. Uh, I tell you, you guys that run outside, I admire you so much, especially in the 10 degree weather, five degree weather. I see Katie Mayo out there running. I see Matt Shore out there in the snow. Um, I, I admire that. I think, you know, it's funny in the, I, I, in the past, I used to say that, oh, you people run this, you're crazy. You're nuts. And now I, I look, I'm trying to be truthful to, to the, it, I, I admire it. I think it's amazing. Uh, I'm not that tough. I, I don't go out in zero degree weather. I've, I've ran in 20 degree weather before. And, uh, and I didn't enjoy it <laughs> to say the least. I didn't enjoy it. I don't like bundling up to run. I'd rather sit home on my treadmill. Uh, and that is the way it is. And, and it's okay. And it's okay. So I know, look, uh, one of the things that, uh, one of the concerted, uh, concerted efforts I'm trying to make going forward is not to call people crazy. It's such a backhanded compliment. Cause what I really mean is I admire that you can do that. And I think you're really tough cause I don't do it. And whether it be someone running in the cold or whether it be somebody uh, like Tabby Booz who, who did like, who's averaging like 20 hours of, of activity on Strava the last few weeks or, uh, or Jeff Beeson who just ran a 50K and regularly runs 100 mile races and Brian Burke who runs 100 mile races. And I think to myself, man, those guys are insane. They're crazy. I'm, I'm done with that word. I'm kind of trying to flush this out of my system. And I know it's supposed to be like a little bit of levity and I know it's supposed to be funny. We're all kind of supposed to giggle, but it's a backhanded compliment. And what I really mean is I admire that. And I think you're tough. Um, and I think one of the things that I'm going to try to do this year is try to change my vocab a little bit. And yeah, it was, there's all, there's time for fun and games. Oh, he's crazy. And that's a backhanded compliment, but there's times when you talk to somebody and you just got to give them credit where credit is due. Hey man, uh, you ran in the snow. That's tough. That is tough. That's toughness right there. That's awesome. Hey, you know, you ran as 10 degree weather. That's tough. I admire that. And I do. And I think we need more of that. Uh, and, and so that's one of my, one of my kind of, one of the things that I've noticed about myself in the last few, uh, few weeks, actually, that I just, I just want to change. I want to give credit where credit is due. Um, so that just came out of nowhere, I know, but that is what it is. Uh, real quick, let me just talk about recap. We're going to recap last week because I said I was going to do it on this podcast. Uh, again, if you want to see next week's plans, you can go on um, you can go on our, our Facebook page. I, I'll, I'll try. You know what? I'll try to put it up on the uh, I'll try to put it up on the website too in the blog section. Maybe we'll get that up there later today. And there's a schedule. And if you're on Zwift and you want to meet us, by all means. If you want to add something to that list, let me know. And also. Um, what do you call it? Also, if there's stuff that is, it doesn't have to be Zwift related stuff. So if you have like something like a, uh, someone said, Hey, we could do a, a team ordinary challenge. And some of you guys have done them before. And I think that's a great idea. And if you want to do something like that, it doesn't have to be an on Zwift thing. You can do something off Zwift too. And we'll put that on the schedule. So any ideas I'm open, let me hear them. Um, and we'll update that. I like the idea of having a schedule and then, uh, and then, and, and using it. So last, where were we last Monday? Uh, what did I do on Monday? Oh, here we go. Here we go. I didn't do anything on Monday. Monday was day off. That's what I do. Monday's kind of my day off. Tuesday, um, we both, we got together in the morning and we did a, a workout. I did my two hour rides, but the first hour was a, a tough workout that we did. Uh, man, it was, it was hard. Tuesday, both Tuesday and Thursday's workouts were really hard, but I spent two hours on, on the, uh, on the bike in the morning on Tuesday, I ran, uh, I did a workout run. We did our, uh, I, I got together with Ron in the morning and did a workout run. Um, ran about four miles, but it was a, you know, a structured workout with some sprint intervals, which is really tough and really good. I kind of really like those workouts on Zwift in the morning. I know, here we go again. Uh, but I do like those workouts, the workout structures. It just offers you, you don't even have to think about it. You just follow the instructions and you get the workout done. It's really good. And aside from just like being, all right, hey, go out there and run, uh, you know, three and a half miles and then you do it, you know, or whatever it is, you just kind of just don't have any kind of direction, but Hey, run, you know, set the treadmill to this speed, set the treadmill to that speed, change it, change it, change the, uh, the angle, whatever they give you the directions. You just follow. It's really easy and really effective. And it's going to help me out. I know it's already helping me out Thursday. Like I said, we did another two hours. I want to thank all the guy, everyone that that showed up by the way, on these rides, um, 
Let me see who showed up the last week. Uh, I know Todd Seiden showed up, Mike Romans, Ron Boos, Tabby Boos. Um, I believe Elena showed up on Tuesday. Lauren showed up, I think, one day. Uh, and I think that is it. Maybe Aaron showed up one day. Aaron might have showed up one day too. All right. Um, what else? So we did the, the Thursday, and then we did the Thursday night ride as well. Thursday night ride went really well. Again, the Thursday night ride has been really, really fun. I want to say we had about 25 people show up, and uh, it was really, I don't know, it was top notch. I'm looking forward to this week's as well. Uh, the Tour de Zwift we did on Saturday. That was a tough climb. It took me like an hour and 40 minutes. Some of you guys it took a lot shorter. It was over 2,000 feet of elevation. Um, it was these, the Watopia Mountain Course. It was hard. It was hard. Burned 941 calories that day. Uh, but a lot of climbing got it done. Felt really good when I, it was one of those things, you know what, when you, when you finish and you feel good that you finished, you know, it was a tough workout. So I felt good. Uh, Sunday, yesterday, I got back on the treadmill to, to do the workout. I was gunning for seven miles, which was a new recent high for me if I could get that far. And I got to tell you, I was hitting mile five and I felt so strong. I felt so great. Uh, and then I got this speed stall error on my on my treadmill basically the treadmill stopped in its tracks just stopped out of nowhere at 5.32 miles so i had like 1.78 miles to go uh or six eight miles to go i can do math um and i you know I wasn't going outside. I'm quarantined. I wasn't, uh, I tried to jump on our, we have an elliptical. So I tried to jump on that and the elliptical wouldn't pick up the the run pod. I thought it would, and it didn't. Uh, so I stayed on that maybe like five, another five, 10 minutes, which probably wasn't adequate to make the seven miles, but I was so frustrated. I did some work on the treadmill. We're going to try it out again. Hopefully it, it, it resolves some of the issues. I don't know. I'm not really a technician. I know I've been kind of harping on this uh, bad treadmill thing, but it is what it is. We're gonna we're gonna just. I, I made some tra- some changes, made some adjustments. We'll hopefully it'll fix it. But I, I honestly, I think it's you know it's it's ready to be put to pasture. I think it's uh, it's busted up. I either have to call a technician to come in and check it out, or uh, I just live with it for now, um, or buy a new treadmill. I don't know. It's one of those things. Do I have to even think about it right now? I don't even want to think about it. Anyway. Uh, so that was the training, you know, so I got a number of good bike rides in, I got a number, I had three runs and I think five bike rides, one, two, three, four, five, six bike rides total, but a lot of them were on the same day. So it kind of doesn't count. Um, anyway, six bike rides, three runs feel really good, uh, about training. I'm down, I'm still down four pounds. I'm kind of like, just, I hit like this little, I dropped four, I gained two, I lost two and I'm kind of just sitting there right now. Um, but we're going to focus a little bit more on the weight loss going forward too. I think it's all going to help. I think, look, I, I thank you guys so much for being honest with me and coming back with feedback. I love it, even especially the tough feedback. The tough f- feedback is sometimes it's hard to hear, but it's what gets the ball rolling to make changes and make things better. So thank you guys for that. Thank you for being open and honest. Um, remember our Patreon page, patreon.com slash ordinary marathoner. You get your name on the scroll that's coming right after this when I say every day is an ordinary day unless you make it extraordinary. So get after it, guys.